Nepalese uh, ecosystem and particularly in Himalayan region. Uh, why I will uh, show you some uh, pictures uh, because uh, the pictures are uh, quite evident to show the reasons why uh, Nepal is uh, impacted. And here are the uh, pictures. Uh, the, these pictures are uh, very beautiful, uh, beautiful to uh, look at, but uh, um, yeah, uh, we have very uh, heartening experience uh, because uh, these most uh, glaciers uh, in the world world uh, are melting. We, we know it, not only in Nepal, uh, all over the world, but uh, most of the big glaciers, they, they lie in Nepal. So they are in, uh, the scientists say that they are on the final uh, demise and uh, it is due to uh, global warming. Here in this picture also you can see uh, this uh, ice mass uh, here. Uh, it was much uh, larger before. Now it is uh, reducing uh, day by day because of this uh, uh, global warming. And here uh, is uh, the picture of uh, a glacier lake called uh, Chorolpa. And uh, it was uh, very small like this in 1957. And it is getting larger and li larger day by day. It is because of um, global warming, you see. And here this graph clearly shows the uh, increase in the size of this uh, glacier lake. There are so many gla glacier lakes like that uh, increasing uh, the size. And they are uh, causing the moraine dam and they can burst any time and they can uh, cause uh, floods and land landslide downstream uh, which uh, goes through Nepal to India and Bangladesh. And not only Nepal but India and Bangladesh will be directly affected if the gl glacier lakes will uh, burst. And here, uh, these uh, pictures, uh, you see, are uh, this picture is uh, from 1950s, and this is uh, the recent picture. And here you can see, uh, in this black and white picture, uh, the mass of uh, ice uh, volume is uh, much larger than uh, you see here. You see the difference uh, here and here in uh, 60 years. So uh, this, uh, this picture is evident uh, um, to show the effect of uh, global warming, climate change. And here, uh, this, uh, we call it Magic high Highway. It's on the way to Mount Everest, the highest uh, peak in the world. And uh, these uh, ice towers, uh, the scientists say that uh, the, uh, these, these towers were um, two times bigger uh, than uh, at, at present. So these are the reasons and uh, the consequences of uh, um, global warming in, in, in Nepal. Uh, because you see, uh, this uh, Nepalese uh, Himalayan study is very important for uh, everybody, for all the countries in the world, because the uh, role of Himalaya, uh, Himalayas on uh, global climate is very important. Uh, and the second reason is that the uh, impact of uh, global warming, uh, warming in the uh, water balance uh, in high mountain uh, areas uh, is another reason. And third reason is the impact of uh, climate change in the flora and fauna in Nepal and beyond in uh, India also, of course. And the fourth reason is uh, the socioeconomic impact of climate change in subs subsistence uh, farming. Uh, while talking about uh, farming, uh, we have monsooning uh, climate and uh, the, the climate system is uh, changing. And uh, we have uh, irregular uh, rainfall. Uh, either we have decreasing rainfall or increasing rainfall, or rainfall and sometimes we have erratic uh, rainfall. You see, which, which causes uh, floods and landslides in various parts of the country. Even this year also, we had a late monsoon. Uh, so the farmers uh, have been suffered due to the uh, late uh, monsoon. Um, usually, the monsoon starts in the middle of June and ends uh, in the middle of September. But uh, this year, the monsoon started only in the early, early uh, August, uh, in the early part of the August month. Uh, so uh, the farmers who were growing paddy were suffered very much. And next year we may have uh, food shortage uh, in the in the whole country. So uh, that is the result of uh, global warming and uh, climate change. And another fifth reason why uh, Nepalese Himalayan study is important is that the water source uh, of uh, South Asia, uh, you can say the whole Asia is uh, uh, Himalayan range, which uh, extends from Burma to Afghanistan. Uh, it's, uh, it covers about uh, 2,500 uh, kilometers uh, range. And that is the, uh, we call it water tower of uh, Asia. And it serves uh, one sixth uh, population of that uh, uh, area. So uh, these are the five reasons why this uh, Himalayan study is uh, very uh, important. And uh, now, uh, at this point of time, what I would like to uh, emphasize here is that it is very imperative uh, for the governments uh, in the region uh, to have good uh,
climate change policies with a strong focus on uh, impact adaptation. And uh, taking this opportunity, uh, I, would, uh, I would just like to inform you that in Nepal we had uh, disaster management act in 1982 that time even india uh, didn't had any act but after that uh, that act uh, uh, only, only that act is uh, uh, in operation we don't have any standing orders and other other rules and regulations so we actually need a very uh, proactive uh, uh, act and uh, we have drafted it uh, three years before but the gov due to the volatile political situation that act has not yet been enacted and we look forward to enact it and we have incorporated climate change uh, uh, proactive policies in that uh, new act. Uh, you cannot find in the old act. And another point uh, here I would like to make is uh, for uh, adaptation planning, it is very essential to understand how the climate of the region might change in the future and how the uh, change might impact uh, the hydrological regime of the river basins. Uh, because most of the rivers uh, in that region are uh, snow fed, the big rivers, um, Nepal, which flows through Nepal to India and Bangladesh. And uh, climate modeling has been an important tool to understand how the climate mi might evolve in the future while uh, hydrological mod modeling can provide insights on how the projected climate might uh, impact the hydrological regime of the uh, river basins. So uh, this is uh, uh, the key issue I think uh, I would like to mention here. Uh, and what we are experiencing is the variability in uh, climate and diversity and we have uh, weather uncertainty due to this uh, global uh, warming and climate change. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have irregular uh, rainfall and uh, we have a cropping uncertainty and uh, the plants, flower, uh, flower, everything are affected. And also even in Kathmandu, you see, which is the capital city of Nepal, uh, earlier uh, we, we could not grow mangoes, leeches and all other fruits, but nowadays you can find uh, even mangoes and leeches in uh, Kathmandu city and the, the temperature is uh, increasing uh, each year and it's getting warmer and warmer. Uh, of course, uh, hu uh, there are human induced uh, factors also because we have increasing number of cars and population pressure and um, uh, everything is there. Uh, it's a polluted city nowadays. Uh, 10, 15 years before it was uh, very beautiful, nice uh, and uh, the population pressure was quite low. Uh, so these are the reasons, but uh, here uh, taking this opportunity, what uh, I would like to uh, tell you is that uh, although Nepal is not uh, contributing um, so much uh, in global warming, uh, as uh, mentioned earlier, we are, we are paying the cost. And uh, uh, what is being said is that uh, the polluters uh, will, will pay uh, the developing countries, but uh, I think that is not a convincing um, thing to do it. And uh, I think uh, the developed countries, they should uh, try to reduce uh, the uh, emission uh, level according to the Kyoto uh, protocol. Uh, so I think uh, we have to work uh, together and at least in that region we have to make proactive policies and we have to uh, at the, at the uh, government level and at the grassroots level we have to work uh, for the uh, good adaptation. And as the provocator mentioned earlier that uh, in Nepal also we have some problems even in the villages. You see nowadays uh, people uh, would like to construct uh, um, motorways uh, in their villages and they cut forests and they uh, just uh, don't take up, uh, uh, take take care of the environmental degradation. That, that that things are happening even in Nepal, and we are also polluting the uh, country and beyond. So th uh, that thing also should be taken into consideration, and we have to uh, work together uh, to build the nature. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll move now to hear uh, from Sri Lanka, uh, Mr. Rajana Piyadasa is a senior lecturer in the Department of Geography the University of Colombo in Sri Lanka. Uh, thank you very oh, much. Uh, uh, thank uh, you. Good morning, Sil. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, actually, I'm a uh, uh, hydrogeologist. So based on the hydrogeological aspects, so I am going to be uh, uh, describe my presentation with the uh, topic. So the based on the physical uh, impact research, we know uh, uh, now we know that the people uh, will not all affect by climate change at the same rates, the frequency or magnitude. This means uh, that not everyone is equally exposed as a consequence of their geographical equation. In other way, effect of the climate change is not equal for people who live in the same area. So it means the, uh, the, the people who are living in the vulnerable areas of the farmers, hotel owners and the uh, uh, other people who are in the, the different way they have to be uh, uh, identified. The, it means their, the adaptation measures could be different. 
the vulnerable area may be the coastal zone, mountainian area, the sometimes is to be the uh, island. The Sri Lanka is a small island, the uh, main flow area is 65,000 square, square kilometers. So climate uncertainty is the biggest problem uh, uh, nowadays. So the Sri Lanka, agricultural, Sri Lanka is the agriculture based country, so more than 65 percent that depend on the agriculture uh, uh, mainly with the rice cultivation. The early days, the early uh, decades, the farmers get water from the monsoon rains. So we are receiving the two monsoons on the southwest and the northeastern monsoon. Now, uh, normally the southwest monsoons we are receiving uh, early September, but this year still we are not receiving these uh, monsoons. So, uh, but the farmers not getting water in the correct time for the cultivation. This is the biggest problem now. So we, we can't identify. So when we can get the water. So most number of the, the mostly the number of the rainy days is decrease, but the annual uh, rainfall is still uh, significantly not changed uh, in the dry zone of the Sri Lanka. So the dry zone is uh, compiled is normally 65% uh, of the Sri Lanka. So it's uh, get, uh, 150 millimeters per year, but the normally uh, the number of rainy days is decreased, but the annual rainfall is still not significantly decreased. So how they get the people? Uh, how the uh, people get the water? So government of Sri Lanka, the promotes the agro wells. So agro wells mean, this means the large number of dug wells. So uh, it means the dug wells, the diameter could be uh, sometimes the five to 10 meters. It's helped to get the water uh, uh, for the cultivation during the, so they are, they, they are not getting water. In the same time, the agro wells help to increase the ground water level using the recharge. The last few years, uh, uh, more than 25,000, so it's, it's started in 1970, 19, 9, 2002, actually now the more than uh, 25,000 dugwells are constructed, they're getting water for the cultivation. The, there is uh, some uh, negative impacts also there because of the very costly to construct the well protection. So I have seen recently, the, uh, you can see, it's a, I have seen the two big uh, elephants are putting into the well. So, so, uh, the, the asset some wells is constructed related to the forestry area. So uh, 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 this is the, uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, the government of Sri Lanka, they encourage the farmers to rehabilitate the ancient irrigation tank systems. So uh, through the uh, farm organization, and it still helped to get the water during the uh, unexpected dry spells. Uh, in Sri Lanka, more than 35,000 irrigation tanks are available in the dry zone. But unfortunately, it's not functioning on the nearly uh, 20,000 tanks. The rehabilitation improvement of the ancient irrigation tanks are a large number of mine irrigation systems. The, uh, the tanks and the annicans have been carried out. There are programs to redevelop the rural economy uh, by developing water resources in the small tank system of the river basin to increase crop and livestock production and the water for. Uh, drinking and the bathing and the improving the groundwater recharge, the enhance the microclimate. So, but I know during the unexpected uh, climatic pattern, spreading uh, different diseases uh, through the cultivations. So, the some of the farmers are using traditional short-term adaptation uh, measures. So, they are taking some uh, leaves from the forestry and the grinding, and then take the juice and they are the spraying, and then they can uh, uh, to uh, minimize the. Uh, spreading of these uh, diseases. I know some of the farmers change the crop patterns and use the short-term rice crops. So they have take the, normally we are using the four months uh, crop uh, rice cultivation. Now they are taking the two and a half months uh, cultivation. But they are getting uh, less uh, low income. But therefore farmers use alternative cash crop in between the two major rice, uh, rice cultivations like uh, ladies fingers, uh, brinjals and other beans. So. Other major problem is to be uh, the uncertain floods. Uh, now, some of the river basin areas, the identified vulnerable areas are ident uh, 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 identified by the GIS mapping, and the, uh, the expected to rain, uh, people can move to the safer places. So, this is what I have to go to uh, explain during my presentation for the uh, uh, coming thing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
So the 